Okay, how do we graph piecewise functions? There's two methods I'm going to show you in this video. We're going to go through two examples. The first one, you can see f of x equals 2x plus 4, 3, and x minus 3 squared plus 2, but it's giving us these domain restrictions, meaning we're just going to graph that portion of the graph. So I'm going to show you a method here where if we're graphing, this is like y equals, f of x is like our y or our output. We're graphing y equals 2x plus 4, but only when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So what you can do if you want is go over here to where x is negative 1. I'm just going to draw like a dashed or dotted line. You can erase this later if you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph the line y equals 2x plus 4. It has a y-intercept of 4. It has a slope of 2, which means we're going up 2 over 1. Okay, and you can repeat that process. Okay, and you can get your line like this. But we only want the part that's less than, meaning to the left of uh, negative 1 or equal to negative 1. So that means that this part here at negative 1 or to the left, meaning less than, that's the part of the graph that we want. So the other part of the graph, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to erase because we don't actually need that. Okay. So now the next part, y equals 3. Now y equals lines, remember these are horizontal lines. So I'm going to graph the line y equals 3 but this is in between negative 1 and 2. So if we go over here to x equals 2, again, I'm just going to draw like a light uh, dashed or dotted line. We're going to be in between negative 1 and 2, and it's the line y equals 3. So here's y equals 3, but we only want to be in between negative 1 and 2, so not including negative 1, so this is going to be open, not including 2, but just less than 2, so we're in between negative 1 and 2. Notice here this was less than or equal to negative 1, that's why I have this as a a closed circle, it includes that point. This is open, meaning it doesn't include that point. And the part of the graph that we don't need now, we're going to go back and we're going to erase. Okay, now this is just one method. I'm going to show you another method in number two here. The last part is y equals x minus 3 squared plus 2. We know this is a parabola. It's in vertex form. The vertex is positive 3, positive 2. So I'm going to go over here to our vertex. You can see the a value is 1. It's opening up. And uh, you can see that this would be like, uh, if we plot some points, it's going to be like 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, and it's going to look like a parabola, something like this, okay? But we want the part where x is greater than, meaning to the right of, or equal to 2. So this part here that's to the left of 2, we don't actually need, I'm going to erase that portion there, and we just want the part greater than or equal to to the right. Now these ones happen to overlap the, the open part and the closed part, so that's going to end up being like a filled in circle. And that's it. Now you've got your piecewise function. Let's look at number two. Now I'm going to show you a different method. Some students like this method better. And what you're doing is you're graphing uh, these two functions. Now here the dividing line is x is less than zero, meaning to the left of the y-axis, or x is greater than or equal to zero, so to the right of the y-axis. I'm not going to draw on the lines here. We can just think of the y-axis as dividing it up into two parts. But what I'm going to do to show you here is I'm going to make a table, and I'm going to pick values that are zero or less. Now 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Now you might be saying, well Mario, this is less than but not equal to 0, but we're going to still put that point 0 in. I'm just going to draw it as an open circle on the graph because it doesn't include 0. So let's put 0 in. We get 1. If I put negative 1 in, I get negative 1 squared is 1 times a negative is negative 1. This will give you positive 4, so that's 3 plus 1 is 4. Uh, check my math here, so this would be negative 2 squared is 4, that's negative 4, plus 8, that's going to give you 4, plus 1 is 5, and negative 3 is going to give us a negative 9 here, plus 12 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So if we graph these points, we get 0, 1, uh, and remember how that was less than uh, but not equal to 0, so this is actually going to be open, okay, open, not including that point. Uh, negative 1 is going to be at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, negative 2, 5, which is going to be right here. Uh, negative 3, 4, it's going to be right here. And remember how we said we're less than but not equal to 0. So it's just the part of the graph going to the uh, left of x equals 0. Now for the second part, y equals 3x minus 3, we're also going to make a table, but we're going to pick values that are 0 or greater. So I'm just going to pick 0, 1, 2, 3. If I put 0 in, I get negative 3. If I put 1 in, I get 0. If I put 2 in, I get 3. If I put 3 in, I get 6. So let's go ahead and plot these. So 0, negative 3 is right here, and that's going to be closed because it's equal to 0. So this point here is closed. 1, 0 is here. 2, 3 is here. And again, you can see we're going to the right or greater than or equal to 0. So we want this part of the graph, not the part here going to the left. And you've got your piecewise function. This channel is all about helping you 
raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams making learning math less stressful. If this video helped you and you want more help learning how to graph um, piecewise functions, follow me over to that video right there and I'll show you some more examples.